Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Feeling Your Best. On this show, we are going to feature blind and low vision people who are working on their nutrition, physical fitness, and weight management, uh, where we can share with each other what has worked well for us, perhaps what has not worked well for us, and where blind and low vision um, nutrition and fitness and wellness professionals uh, share advice and ideas with uh, us of things that we might be able to implement in our own lives in order to, whether that's lose weight or eat better or whatever our, our um, you know, health goals might be. Um, to give you a quick idea of why we started this, and maybe I'll let Greg uh, talk a little bit as well, is about a year ago, Greg and I realized that um, you know, we were both in our 40s, we have two young children, we're both blind. And we realized that with all the stress and the hassle of, you know, running kids to activities six days a week, we weren't focusing on our own physical fitness. And yes, like, while we might be taking our kids to gymnastics, we ourselves were just sitting in a chair, you know, watching them. Um, and so we, uh, Greg, you might want to talk about kind of some of the thoughts that you had um, real quick. Yeah, so Stacy said uh, about a year ago, um, you know, it kind of dawned on us that we weren't taking care of ourselves the way that we should be, the way that we had in the past. And as we get older, as we all hear about it, it gets harder to do, whether it be time or, you know, just the way your, your body changes, um, you know, even to lack of sleep and things like that. For me, it was the realization that I have a five-year-old daughter, and if I do the math, that means I will be 57 years old when my daughter graduates high school. That was kind of a reality check for me in that, you know, I want to be able to keep up with my kids for the next 12, 15, 20 years until they're done with high school and off to college or wherever they may decide to go. And, you know, as I'm, I'm sure everyone can attest to, you know, there, there's no time in, in the present to start digging into shape, to start being aware of what you're putting into your body and, and pay more attention to your physical activity levels throughout the day. But, you know, like, like we said, for me, it was that kind of realization that we, we do have young kids, as Stacy said, we're in our 40s and not only do I want to be in good shape now, I want to make sure I'm in good shape for them when they're older and, and be able to keep up with them. That's kind of my goal. I want an active retirement. I got plans. <laughs> <laughs> Once the kids move out, I want to be able to do stuff. So today with us, um, we have two awesome guests. We have Tyler Marin and Lynn Bailiff, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, Tyler, do you want to go first? Sure, no problem. Yeah, my name is Tyler Marin. Uh, I am a four-time Paralympic athlete. I'm a personal trainer, a business owner, motivational speaker, husband and father, uh, camp counselor. I, there's about 300 hats that I wear. It hurts my neck after a while. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I've spent the last uh, 10 plus years working as a, a personal trainer, um, 20 plus years as an elite athlete. So I've spent a lot of time around physical fitness and activity. Um, I got my bachelor's degree from Western Michigan University, uh, worked as a master trainer for 24 hour fitness in South Florida for six years. I was one of their assistant fitness managers for a long time. Um, more recently, I've kind of broken away from that and I'm, I'm working on my own training uh, more in the digital space. So yeah, I spent a lot of years uh, working in this, in this field, in this industry, seeing a lot of things. So really excited to be here to chat with you guys. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tyler. Lynn? Thanks, Stacey. So my name is Lynn Bailiff. I am a registered dietitian and certified diabetes care and education specialist. That's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and I have about 25 years of experience in my field. I'm working in all different aspects of, of nutrition uh, and health. Um, currently, I work in a diabetes pregnancy program. So pregnant moms who have diabetes. But um, I really am interested in, in helping 
anyone understand the, the complicated world that is healthy eating. Excellent. Well, we've collected um, quite a few questions from blind and low vision people on Facebook who have some questions for Tyler and Lynn. And I want to encourage, uh, though some might be initially directed at Lynn and then some initially directed at Tyler, I want to encourage all of us to chime in if you know there's, there's something that's worked for us or if we have some knowledge to share. Um, I also want to reiterate that um, Greg and I, you know, we, we are not personally um, endorsing any particular method. We're only talking about what works for us and we're excited to talk to what works for other people. Um, so obviously, if you have a medical condition such as diabetes um, that might impact your nutrition or your fitness, um, we encourage you to, to speak with your doctor before beginning any sort of new, you know, any sort of diet or any sort of, you know, physical fitness routine. Um, we just hope that this information is helpful. So uh, to begin with, first question we got, I'm starting the fitness journey after a year of complete inactivity, and I'm feeling it. Everything feels harder. I'm interested in any mental tips and tricks to keep the motivation going. Uh, so Tyler, why don't we start with you? We can just go around. Sure. I think this is a really appropriate question to start with, too, because, you know, Greg and Stacy, as you guys had mentioned, like, you kind of came through a different stage of life just recently, right? Or, or found yourself in a different stage of life. You've got, you know, activities that you're running kids around to, and all, all of us know how that game can go, right? The parenting game is pretty busy. And so you woke up one morning and said, wow, like, we're not, we're not really taking good care of ourselves. And so a lot of times we'll find ourselves in this situation where, man, I, I have not been in the fitness game for a minute, right? And now I got to look at jumping back into it. And it's, it's different depending on how long it's been, right? If it's been a decade, especially your body has gone through a lot of changes. If it's been even a year, a couple of months, right? Like, so there's a couple of things that I love to try to give people advice on when they, when they do this. The, the first thing is to remember that you are where you are at the moment, right? Um, I, Greg, I, I know, you know, you, you did a lot of elite sports. I've done elite sports. I've worked with a lot of athletes in the past and, you know, they come back from a hiatus and they're like, oh yeah, I used to, I used to crush this weight and they start picking things up and throwing them around and, you're just not the same, right? You're just not prepared for that. You are where you are for the moment. So the first thing you got to do is give yourself some grace. Okay. Start off light and, and progress very slowly because you don't want to think about your fitness in the span of a week or two weeks or a month or a year, or even a couple of years. You want to think about it in lifelong um, spans, uh, it's okay to plan short term, right? But what my my point is to say, like, fitness is a lifelong journey, and so you know, taking it slow to start with and thinking like I've got years to get this right is is an okay thing. It doesn't have to happen overnight. So you know, give yourself a little bit of grace. Start off nice and light, and progress yourself very slowly, very consistently, um, and, and love yourself through that process. Don't judge yourself too harshly. So that would be my, my strongest recommendation for somebody who's just jumping back in. I think it's really important for people to understand that, um, there are a lot of resources available. I've put together a lot of resources, um, with my fitness programs. Um, there are YouTube videos out there that are more accessible, um, there's gyms and there's uh, equipment that's more accessible. There, there's, there are resources available, um, but really it comes down to you. Uh, you have to be the one to make the decision to get out there and, and make it happen, right? Um, I, I like to teach people that like, nobody is going to see success for you, Um it's some paths can be a little easier, some harder, but generally speaking, it's up to you to get out there and, and make sure that you're grabbing on to the fitness and the nutrition that you really want to have for yourself. So a little bit of work that it's going to take, but you're worth every step. Excellent. Lynn, what about you? Yeah, so I have, I have two tips that kind of come to mind. 
And I think the first one is it can be very overwhelming when you're like, okay, I'm going to completely change the way I eat. And it's sort of, it's such a big, huge thing. Often it's easier to think of it as small steps that will add up. So sort of picking, you know, one place to start, like I'm going to change the beverages I select, or I'm going to, you know, stop eating snacks after, you know, 8 p.m. They build on each other. One little change isn't going to help you to lose significant weight, but it is a way to have a building block. So I think having very specific behavior changes and then reaching those goals kind of maintain them for a week or so, and then adding something new. It just sort of makes it less of an overwhelming you know, thing to think about. And the second tip kind of came from a client of mine, and that is that, you know, slips and falls are going to happen along the way. You know, you make these great changes. You're like, yeah, I'm not going to eat after 8 p.m. And one night you eat, you know, 10 Oreos. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay that that happens. It's very common. But what you want to do is sort of just pick yourself up, kind of think, okay, that happened, move on immediately to continue with your goals. Don't be like, okay, I did it on a Friday, so I'm going to just eat whatever I want all weekend and I'll start again on Monday. You know, try not to throw away long periods of time after you have a slip or fall as far as eating goes. Just start over again. Think about what happened, maybe how you can prevent it in the future but go ahead and give yourself that grace and just start over again. Awesome. Yeah. um, And thank you both of you for those comments. I, I of course agree with both of you, Uh, Tyler, I have experienced exactly what you mentioned and the needing to give yourself grace and understand that, you know, after 12 months, after five years, you're not that athlete anymore, but even just to feel good in your own body, you got to start small, you got to be patient. And like I said, you got to give yourself grace. Um, and Lynn, what, one thing that I, I like that you said, the, the kind of starting small, you don't have to make it overwhelming. Something that I did on a personal level that I think really kicked off just thinking and eating healthier was I eliminated sugar. And I used to be a Coca-Cola addict until a couple of years ago. Uh, And first I started with just not drinking Coke. And then that led to not adding sugar to my coffee. Uh, And then just, you know, like a domino effect, just one thing after another, I started making healthier decisions based on eliminating some of those problematic foods from my diet. And Greg has gone from having several Cokes a day to not having had a Coke in over a year. So he is pretty. Almost two years now. Yeah. Almost two years. So it's, it's epic. Yep. It can be done. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, For me, my, my advice would be a little different. I am not an elite athlete. I don't think I have near the self-discipline and motivation that, that Tyler and Greg do. However, what really helped me was accountability. Um, And this isn't going to necessarily, this is going to look different for different people. But what I did last summer was I joined like one of those four week weight loss um, challenges at a local gym. Uh, I will plug it. It's called LP Fitness. If you live in Lincoln, I had a really great experience with it. I would definitely recommend it to any blind or low vision person. Um, And in that that four weeks, um, you were paired with a nutrition coach and you did three hour long um, uh, classes a week. And man, they were intense. And having that um, accountability coach who I was in contact with several times a day um, at, you know, the last week or two, I had to text, you know, send her a picture of my plate, like to show her like everything I ate. Um, And some people might find that triggering or upsetting or whatever. For me, it was actually really helpful. And I wish I had someone to do that with now um, because I needed that accountability. And she was always very kind and very great. I mean, at no point was I ever shamed or, you know, she would just simply give me feedback. Um, And so I, I think having that really disciplined accountability was necessary for me to kick off my journey because I'm, I'm just too lax with myself. Like I am that person that's like, 
I ate 10 Oreos today. It's Friday night. I guess I'll just start again Monday, you know? Or, um, so I, I kind of needed that accountability and, and not everyone is going to need that. And that's why I kind of wanted to have different perspectives um, because there are a lot of people who don't need that, but I did. Um, and I also feel um, like with what Lynn said, one thing that they did during this program was the first of the four weeks, they gave you a grocery list and a list of things to eat. And they didn't tell you how much of it you could eat. They said, you know what, just only eat stuff on this list. And it was all really normal stuff, like not, you know, weird. Um, but it was just stuff like turkey bacon and lean meat and um, egg whites and fruit and vegetables. Um, and they said, just only eat things that are on this list. Don't worry about how much of it you eat. And then the second week they started, you know, saying, okay, eat this much with each meal, eat this much protein, eat this many healthy carbs, eat this many or this much healthy fat and, you know, this type of serving of vegetables with each meal. Um, but the first week it was just not thinking about how much I ate or counting calories. It was just only eat stuff on this healthy food list. I mean, if you need to eat like three sugar-free yogurts or something like go ahead at least it's sugar-free yogurt and not ice cream so that that kind of that um sort of stepping stone for that first week helped me to transition to eating that type of food and then I was able to like think about portion control for that type of food so that's what helped me I like that too because you know even you say like having the uh, motivation that an elite athlete might have to to stay on course. I, th I think that it's super duper rare to have somebody who can just do it because they, they want to do it. Um, even elite athletes, there's a layer of accountability built in that they're training for their sport, their team, their country, their, you know, there, there's a, uh, a, a set level of pressure or uh, pressure is maybe not the right word, but accountability that's built into that. So yeah, I think accountability is really, really big. And again, highlighting the idea that it needs to be positive. Um, the more I do personal training, the more I experience fitness, the more I, I realize that there's a part of fitness that can be really negative, right? Uh, even, you know, I'm really glad that you had this positive experience with this group because sometimes I hear about, you know, my clients and other people signing up for groups and it's, it's, a, it's super intense and they go in and they get crushed for, for four weeks. They destroy themselves and in a way, they're, what's really happening is they're in, in almost punishing themselves in, with fitness, right? And it's just not the way you're supposed to do it. It's okay to work out at an intense level, but not because psychologically you're trying to uh, punish yourself for not doing it before and, and things like that. So just things to be really careful of. But I'm so glad that you had a good experience with that. And yes, accountability is super helpful.